how can we compete you know, with HP? How can we get into some of their business architectures? And the next logical progression was, let's get into the compute business. And probably the first time that was said, everybody at Cisco was like, are you kidding me? Why would we do that? That is the silliest idea ever. Myself, when I heard that we were getting into the compute business, somebody, my wife thought I came down with Tourette's because I was very angry. I had developed relationships with my Dell, HP, and IBM friends. They were reselling my switches, and all of a sudden I was going to go and I was going to compete with them. But that was the basis of what Cisco, when Cisco got into the compute business, there was a lot of people that just said, you know, a server is a server. You guys are wasting your time, you're wasting your efforts. You know what, we're just going to stick with what we have. Well, that was two and a half years ago. And Two years, Cisco now has a run rate business of over a billion dollars. It is the fastest selling product that Cisco's ever brought to market. We have over 8,000 customers that have bought UCS. Now, 8,000 customers, those 8,000 customers were once IBM, HP, and Dell customers. These weren't net new business customers. These were customers that we have taken market share away from. Um, like I said, we've got eight, over 8,000 customers. I was making this presentation when we had the first 10 customers. So talk about a tough sale. I want you to buy, you know, look at this server architecture. We've got 10 customers. You know, we've got Fetchomatic. And we've got the, I mean, you know, it's usually those really small companies that you've never heard of that you know, initially buy this, this, this technology. These 8,000 customers now are, are really the who's who you know, in the industry. Um, anybody that has ever gone to Expedia, Priceline, Hotwire.com, Cars.com, any of those have gone through a site called Travelport. Travelport is using, on their front end, 1,200 UCS blades to front end the entire web. 1,200 UCS blades. Okay, they, they replaced um, another, obviously, large vendor. Uh, U.S. Army, U.S. Air Force, uh, here locally, uh, no, I, I cover the sled market, so K through 12 in state government and uh, universities for four states. Uh, you know, Notre Dame, I'm going to give you a reference of Indianapolis Public Schools, um, uh, City of Elkhart, you know, these, these are just a, just a few quick names that, that I, I can mention. Um, so I'm going to go through a little bit of the, uh, the architecture. Here's where we've, we've come. In two years, we have surpassed both IBM and Dell, or IBM and Dell in the blade market. We are now in the number two position. Everybody else is losing market share, and Cisco is rapidly losing. So we've got we actually created a different kind of architecture. So how many people use blade technology today? Just one. Okay, is everybody else? Rack environment, or do you just not know? Thank you for being interactive. So, for those of you, uh, are most most of you network centric people here in this industry? Raise your hand if you're network centric. Okay, it's okay. People literally are here for the free food, aren't they? We're in accounting. <laughs> You're a cloud user. The reason, me, the reason why Cisco got into this market is we actually developed a, a, a more efficient architecture. We took advantage of what Intel and VMware uh, had to offer and our own technology. If you look at a traditional data center that has blades, the reason why a lot of companies have not gone to blade uh, architecture is because every time you wanted to add a chassis, you had to add infrastructure, you had to add fiber channel switches, and you had to add, add Ethernet switches. So before you even put any compute resources in there, it costs you 20, 30, sometimes $40,000 every chassis. Well, Cisco also used this type of technology in their data centers. Remember those 48 data centers that Cisco had that we collapsed down to four? We used this type of technology from Dell and IBM and HP and Sun. So we knew the challenges. So when Cisco developed UCS, we took what we knew in the networking world 
And we also hired some very prominent engineers from the HP, Dells, and the IBMs from a compute standpoint. So what we did is we took a very complex architecture where you have Ethernet and you have fiber channel and you have a management server and you have blades and each one of these blade chassis you've got fiber channel and Ethernet connectivity. We started to shrink this footprint. So what Cisco did, in a nutshell, is we took and we utilized, remember the Nexus 5000 that we talked about earlier? We basically used that as our front end single pane of management. And remember the Nexus 2000 that we talked about? Right? That is a slave to that, that, that this manages all the Nexus 2000. We took the Nexus 2000 type technology and we embedded it in our chassis. So in essence, what our chassis are is basically sheet metal. It has eight fans, it has four power supplies, and it has copper traces. That's it. The fexes, the fabric interfaces, are basically four ports or eight ports of 10 gig wire ones capable of fiber channel you know, or Ethernet and Ethernet. So it's a wired once technology. So what we did is we collapsed all of this. And so here's the here's the FEXs and here's the 5000. This is fiber channel over Ethernet. All of these blades, all of these blades are wired for whatever you want to give them. If you have an application that requires fiber channel, you can supply fiber channel. If you're doing iSCSI, if you're doing network attached storage, you can supply it to any one of these big plates. The other benefit that this technology has is that anywhere in the system, this blade, if this one fails or if you need to take this out of service, you can make any one of these blades take on that personality, including the MAC address, including the worldwide name, including the UUID, including the boot, including the security, including the quality of service. It literally will take the personality, whereas you can't do that in a traditional architected world. This, these are the reasons that Cisco has been so successful with this product. You know, the, the, the differentiated value, and, and I'll go into this when I talk about the uh, uh, one of the, the successes. But we took a different approach, and, and it's an approach that actually allows for a software front end that allows you to automate and orchestrate across the entire solution. And what I mean by that is, and I, I'll kind of go back to a, to a story. Remember, I grew up watching Andy Griffith. And every time Andy Griffith wanted to make a phone call, who did he have to go through? He had to go through Clara, the nosy little lady with the curlers in her hair who always had to, okay, Andy, oh, by the way, you know, thanks for the apple pie, right? And then she would literally take a connection and, you know, take it to the Mount Pilot Exchange who she would talk to somebody else and then she connected them to the sheriff and Mount Pilot. It was that why, I mean, literally you had to move things around. Now what happens? Now you have an exchange. You have a bank of servers that you can call anybody in the world, whether it be at their phone or whether it be at their cell phone, and you immediately get them within seconds. And that's all done with software switching. So if you create an environment and an architecture that you all you have to do is add software to do that, now all of a sudden you can do self-service provision. You can do the service catalog. So your customers can go in and just say, you know what? I want a VoIP session. I want to create a VDI session. I want a virtual machine and let the system below it do all the work. That's what Cisco provided. <laughs> So, you know, just from a, from a focus standpoint, you know, we work with all of the, operate, uh, all of the, uh, the operating systems, all of the, the uh, application providers. Uh, that I don't think that there's a single one that we don't work with, whether it's virtualized or non-virtualized, bare metal. We have the capabilities of that wired once, any to any connectivity within our complete system. And actually, it's not a scenario where you have to kind of throw out your existing architecture. Let's say you have, you know, vendor A servers. If you virtualize and you actually virtualize with Nexus 1000, I can move virtual machines between those, and the policies of security and uh, quality of service will follow that to other platforms as well. So this isn't a, a wholesale, you know, put in and throw everything else out. We can work within your, your current environments. 
um, record performance. Um, the, the architecture that we have deployed has allowed us to not only create I mean, over 50 world records in two years from a performance standpoint. So all that means is that we have an architecture that again, though we're using Intel architecture, and we're using standard DIMMs, and we're using standard converged network adapters, and we're using standard space architecture, the way that it is designed allows us to be much more efficient, both from an I.O. perspective and a, uh, and a uh, memory perspective. For those of you that, um, and I'll go into this in just a second, but memory. Memory is everything depending on certain applications, VDI being one of them. We have, we have a, a solution we have for two years that can do, uh, that can maintain 1333 memory, 1333 megahertz memory across 384 gig, which was a couple of years ago, if you look back three or four years ago, did that kind of get that kind of level? You're talking about 150 to a $300,000 box. We can do it on $10,000. <coughs> so the architecture is a, is a little bit different, but it was in conjunction with Intel, it was in conjunction with the, uh, the standard players in that architecture. Applications, pretty much all of them. Um, this is important, service providers. Remember we talked about the cloud and everybody's kind of jumping in to offer services. These service providers have invested in UCS because of the capabilities that we have and the architecture that we have driven. For those of you that have not had a, a presentation on UCS, and if you're in SLED, I'll be more than happy to, I'm not a whiteboard guy, I'd love to come up and, you know, I'm not a I don't like PowerPoints because it takes you down a certain path, but I would be more than happy to map things out on how this would work in your environment.